Welcome to the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast, where coaches gain the confidence, motivation, and expertise to make their next business breakthrough. I am your host, Lori Young, certified master marketer, business growth coach, and all around truth teller. Breakthroughs can come with flashes of absolute clarity, sudden shifts in mindset, learning new skills, changes in habits, or anything else that changes the course of your coaching business. So if you're ready to be inspired and break through to your next level of growth, let's go. Well, welcome back. We are on episode five of the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast. And I don't know about you, but anytime I visit a social media platform, I am reminded of how noisy and busy it is online. And today we are going to talk about how do you make yourself stand out from all of the noise and especially you know, everywhere you go, all you hear is people uh, talking about AI and using AI to create all of their content online. And we're gonna be talking about how we can use storytelling uh, today to really make ourselves stand out from the crowd because you know it is busy and there has to be something that's gonna make you different from everyone else. And storytelling is the most masterful way to uh, really engage your audience. Today, I have one of my very favorite copywriters, uh, Jennifer, with us today. And I have known Jennifer for, oh my gosh, like maybe four or five years, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, probably four years at least. Right. So uh, she is honestly like a master at telling stories. And I'm hoping that she'll tell us uh, her funny story about uh, her refrigerator and baby food. So (laughs) anyway, um, let me just give you a formal introduction. Uh, Jennifer DeWitt is a copywriter and storytelling expert. She supports female entrepreneurs around the globe by crafting story-driven content that converts. As a former librarian, Jennifer believes in the power of words and the importance of using your voice. Now she's on a mission to help more business owners harness the strength of stories too. When she isn't working, you'll likely find Jennifer hanging out with family, sipping iced coffee, always has to have the coffee, or with her (laughs) nose buried in a book. So welcome, Jennifer, like to the show. I am so glad you're here. Why don't we just start and you can let the listeners know a little bit about you and your story. And Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, so... Like you said, I um, am a former librarian um, and teacher. So that's what I did before becoming an online business owner. Um, and I loved doing that, but I really was seeking more um, more freedom in my life, more time freedom, more financial freedom. As my son got into school, I thought being in education would be the perfect balance of I would be at school when he was at school, but the problem was I was at school when he was at school. So if there was class parties, if there was field trips, all the things, I was always working. And Mm. um, so I really wanted to have more flexibility so that I could continue earning the income I was earning, but do it on my own terms and my own time. And so I came into the online space actually as a virtual assistant to start out with. Um, And I I did that. that. Yeah, it didn't last very long. (laughs) For six months or so and realized that the part of working with business owners that I really loved was writing for them, which shouldn't have come as a surprise because I've always loved writing um, and been a very strong writer. And so I pivoted into copywriting and yeah, here we, here we are now. Wow. Okay. And so you do both content writing and copywriting or just copywriting? Um, I do some of both. So okay. I've kind of dabbled in all all the different places that you see words in people's business. I've done a little bit of all of it. Um, I've written website copy. I've written sales pages, emails, social media, right. kind of Everything. kind of played in all the pools. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So tell me this. I always like to ask, like, what makes you stand out from all the other copywriters out there. There's a million, as you know, not a million, mm-hmm. but just like me, you know, there's a million digital marketers. <laughs> yeah. What's your superpower? Like what makes you unique? 
Um, so something that kind of makes me unique, I think, as a person and as a copywriter is why I am a highly creative person because I love writing. I love creating. I also am a very organized um, systems person. And those two don't always go together. Um, but I have found that as a business owner and as a copywriter, that has been sort of my superpower to not only be able to create for my clients, but to keep things very organized, to meet deadlines, to run the back end of my business. That is not always the easiest part of things for creative entrepreneurs. Oh yeah, that that's so true. That, that, that is very true that a lot of times the creativity comes with kind of a more, I don't know, like a little bit airy. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, kind of scattered here, there, just very airy, very, uh, not very structured. Like me, myself, I'm a very structured person. And mm -hmm. I feel like I have creativity as well. Once upon a time, I didn't feel like I did. Oh, you but... definitely do. Yeah. Okay. You're creative as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, those two are not usually married uh, together, that organization and creativity. So that is super, super important. Yeah. Tell me this, um, you know, the whole podcast is about uh, helping coaches boost their uh, breakthroughs in their business, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, breakthroughs come in so many different sizes, so many different shapes. And it's not always about breaking through to like your next level of income. Sometimes it's, it's a matter of like a mindset shift you had, or maybe a new personal habit that you developed that just really made a difference in your business. Tell me about a breakthrough that you have had in your business. Um, so I think mindset is something that I didn't think a lot about before becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not that it doesn't matter for other people cause it definitely does, but I don't think that's something that is talked about as much in different spaces as it is in the online space. So for me, cultivating those mindset habits, um, practicing like daily gratitude, writing in a gratitude journal every day has been a huge shift for me. I've always tried to be a grateful and appreciative person, but there's something about putting pen to paper for me every day and having that habit that just reframes how I enter my business day or my, if it's not a day I'm working a day with my family or doing anything else that has been a big breakthrough for me and just helped me get through the, the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Cause as Absolutely. much as we love this life, there's, there's ebbs and flows and yes. it's just true for everybody. Yes. Very true. That is, I mean, that is so true. I mean, and I think getting into a space of gratitude, like really helps shift your energy. And mm -hmm. I'm like a huge belief uh, that universal energy like attracts, you know, a like energy attracts. And so the mm -hmm. more that you can practice gratitude in your life and in your business, the more you're going to, I think, attract good things into your business. Yeah. And, and even like you said, it helps you to reframe and enter into, into your day and in just a much better space. Yeah. 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 And I think it, it helps you get through when you do have those difficult interactions with a client or someone doesn't respond well to a social media post or like there's going to be little bumps along the way. And if you are focused on being grateful for your business and for the clients that you have or whatever it is that you're focused on that day. It just makes a big, makes a, makes big, a difference. big difference. Absolutely. So, all right, we are going to dive into this whole concept of storytelling. And so I'm going to kind of let you like start us off and then we'll just kind of see where this, uh, this show takes us. Yeah. Yeah. So I know in your intro, you talked about, we're seeing this rise in content created by AI. And I don't by any means think that AI is like the enemy. I'm not afraid of AI tools. I've been playing with them some in my business as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that they have a lot of uses for supporting business owners. But I think that if the way you are getting all of your content is getting AI to spit out your social media captions and then copy and pasting them, that it's not going to resonate and hit home with the people that you are trying to reach. Mm -hmm. 
Because right. ultimately, like what we really want is that human to human connection, especially maybe even this online space, because you're not walking into someone's storefront and meeting them face to face. It is a different um, different way that we interact with people and people want to feel connected. And that's how they're going to remember you and ultimately invest in you is when they feel like they know you and yes. they're not getting to know you with how to tips that you're getting from AI. Um, there's nothing wrong with, again, like incorporating some of that using AI to help you come up with a punchier headline or a subject line that gets more open rates for your email. Like there are some great uses of AI for ideation and things too, but infusing more of your stories into what the content you are creating is ultimately what's going to make people really connect with you and remember you. There's a statistic that's something like we remember stories 22 times more than just facts alone. So yes, it, it can be powerful to share a statistic with someone or a fact with them, but that's not ultimately what, how we're wired to remember things. Right. And, and a classic example of that is a social media post that you wrote mm -hmm. months ago. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't even know how long ago it was, but it was months ago. And it was the story of how your refrigerator told you to purchase baby food and yeah. you have a teenager. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I have a 14 year old who has not eaten baby food in a very long time. Yeah, so we have a smart refrigerator, which my husband loved when we bought it. I was like, this is ridiculous. We don't need a smart refrigerator. <laughs> but we have one. And so it like scans the inside of our fridge every so often. And it will give you suggestions of these are the things you should put on your grocery list. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes not so much like with the baby food. I was like, I don't know what you're, pick I don't know what you're picking up on that you think we're out of. <laughs> so, uh, you know, AI has come a long way. It still has a long way to go, um, but we can't fully rely on it for sure. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, you know, that story just stuck with me. Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it was something you used in the social media post. And to be honest with you, I don't know what the social media post was about. But what I do <laughs> know is the story was so funny to me and so intriguing and so endearing. Like it just really <laughs> helped me to like connect with you on a, on an emotional level and I still remember it to this day. So it, it, yeah. it's very true. Stories do last. So let's talk about what is the element of a good story? Like, how do you know that you're telling a good story? Um, I think it's like what you were talking about with that story. It's finding ways to communicate those little details that help people laugh or that make them remember what you're talking about. It doesn't have to be, I think people get so caught up thinking, oh, if I'm telling a story, it has to be like this grand epic, like this is why I started my business or this life changing moment for me. But you can just go into these little micro moments in your life, like me getting the alert from my refrigerator that I needed baby food, which I did not. But it was just so funny to me at the time. And I think like, zoning in on just those little moments that you can be really descriptive and make people feel like they are there with you, mm -hmm. that that is a huge component of storytelling, that we don't need to be so caught up in telling these big grand tales. I mean, sometimes you will, you'll tell the story of how you started your business and it is big, but it doesn't have to be. Not every story that you share with your audience has to be something huge. It can be little moments and that's how they get to know you. Right. Yeah. And, and like any tips on how do you like, how do you like take a story mm -hmm. and kind of turn it into something useful? Like I think sometimes the, the challenge is, uh, melding together the story mm -hmm. with the tip or uh, what you're trying to convey from the story, right? Right, right. I think some of it is thinking about the emotion that you feel in that moment. So like if you know that your potential client or a future client 
is experiencing frustration with something like that's a common emotion. That's a common reason people are looking to invest in whatever you're off offering that they're frustrated with where they are. Mm -hmm. You can think about a time that you were experiencing frustration mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to be frustration with the same thing. Like that's a common emotion that you can pull into different areas. Um, so that can be a good way to tie in your tip to say like, how I was feeling, then maybe how you're feeling now. And then you can pull in whatever it is that you're, the tip that you're sharing, how you overcame that, how they can use that to overcome something in their day-to-day -day life or whatever it is they're struggling with. Right. Now, I know that not everybody, because there's people out there that are telling good stories, but mm -hmm. I know that one of the struggles that coaches have is how much of their story or how much of themselves do they reveal to mm -hmm. the public? Yeah. And I think that this is different for every business owner. Um, I work with a lot of um, service providers and coaches that are very introverted and they don't want everyone in all the aspects of their life. Like they may not feel comfortable talking about their kids or they may not feel comfortable talking about their marriage or their partner or their relationships. And I think that's okay. Like you can set whatever boundaries it is you need to set for yourself mm -hmm. um, without giving too much away. Like you could tell a story about an interaction you had at Starbucks and that's not telling people about what your kid is struggling with or revealing too much. Like you can still look for ways to share the human element of your life without getting into the nitty gritty of everything going on with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, I, I happen to be a fairly vulnerable person mm -hmm. and um, I think I'm, I think I do a decent enough job, but sometimes, you know, it's like you do struggle. Like you stop and you think like, Ooh, gosh, do I really want to say this? But yet it could be, something good that people can mm -hmm. learn from. And I always find that the really vulnerable posts mm -hmm. um, are the ones that for me are the ones that really pull me in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I found that too. And it's for me, the line comes with being vulnerable about myself and being vulnerable about other people in my life. Like, especially with, um, my son is now 14. He's in high school this year. It was one thing I feel like sometimes to tell funny stories about things that he did when he was a little kid, mm -hmm. but like he is starting to be on social media and all of these things now too. And I have to be respectful of like, that is his journey and his mm -hmm. story and not necessarily mine to tell. Yes. Um, so I think that, and I think we have to remember that with our clients too, it, it, we can tell stories of breakthroughs and of things that our clients have had, but you always have to have that respect of the confidentiality that they have between you as their coach or as their service provider um, to know like what is too much to share and what is okay to share. Right, right. Tell me what makes a good story. I mean, for any story, like the basic elements of a story is you need the hero of the story, whoever it's about. If it's mm -hmm. you, if it's your clients or some just something you observed, there's someone that the story is happening to. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have some kind of conflict within the story. This doesn't have to, again, be like a life or death situation. Um, you, and then you need the resolution of whatever happens. And I think okay. to tile that together, like before you even have those three things, you also need the hook of the story. You need like, why are people paying attention and being pulled in? And in right. some ways that can be the most important part because it's what gets people to keep reading. Yes. Whether it's, you know, the first line of your social media caption the subject line of your email, the header on your sales page, you have to have something that hooks people in. Right, right, yeah. That's very, very, very true. So where, like, do you use stories? Like where, when, like, how do you know, like the best use of stories? 
So I think you can use stories anywhere. You can use anywhere you're putting content out in your business, you can infuse stories. Again, it doesn't have to be like your whole website is just one big story, but you can have like these little stories and micro moments throughout your copy. Um, but you can put them, you know, on your website, on your sales page, in your social media, in your emails. I have a couple of people whose emails list that I'm on that I may not even be exactly their ideal client, but they just tell like the funniest, best stories in their emails. And I get so excited to read their emails. Like even if it's a sales email, I know it's going to be funny and I'm going to connect with it and remember it. Right. Um, but yeah, anywhere that you're putting out content, you can infuse stories into it. And it can also be, it doesn't have to be written content. It could be your YouTube channel or a podcast or doing a live video. Um, at any of those places you can include stories. Mm -hmm. Now, do you consider, like, I'm thinking about like the website. Of course, usually you tell like your story, a little bit of your story in like your about page. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've seen that people are doing, and maybe this is stories, maybe it's not, maybe it's little micro stories, but they're putting like fun facts mm -hmm. on their uh, about page. Yeah, I think that that's a great way to reveal just little pieces of yourself that people can connect with. And again, that's not a story in the sense of like, there's not a conflict and a resolution right. and all these things just because this is your Starbucks order or this is your favorite season or your favorite song or something like that. But it still gives people those glimpses into who you are, not just as a business owner, but as a person too. Right, right, yeah. What else do we need to know about uh, stories, do you think? I think it's really important when you are starting to use stories to find a system that works for you for collecting those stories. Ah. Cause you're gonna like, I feel like the more I write, the more I start to view things through the lens of like something funny happened to me at target or wherever it is that I'm like, Oh, that would be funny to write in an email or that would be funny to include in a social media caption or something like that. So whether it's like the notes app on your phone or you have a spreadsheet that you drop ideas in your Google Sheets or whatever it is. Um, I have also like sent an email to myself before or sent a Voxer to myself before and then I collect them all in Google Drive later. Okay. Um, but I think just finding like a way to store these things because then when you sit down to write your social media captions for the month or write your emails, you have a place that you can go to to pull some of those ideas from because sometimes you sit down and things just aren't flowing at that exact moment you're not thinking of something that you want to write about so having a place to store those things is really important and it doesn't have to be fancy and sophisticated it can just be a google spreadsheet or right. a, a folder in your inbox or whatever it is right now jennifer has uh, a resource that i think you all will love tell us about your little free resource that will help draw out the stories that you might have in your head that you didn't know you had in your head yeah so i have a, a free resource for it's a hundred storytelling prompts and and i include a lot of ways that you can tie these stories back into your business as well but it's a big range of business stories personal stories stories from your childhood just all kinds of different things. Um, and yeah, that's so that's a resource people can grab. It's at jenniferdewittcoffee.com slash story is where you can find it. Um, okay. And yeah, it's completely free and it has a hundred different ideas. It also has, I believe I included five uh, different resources that I like to use to help collect and um, store my stories as well. Okay. Now, how do you, how do you come up with like, because I do, I agree with you. I feel like the hook is probably the most important element of your copy. And mm -hmm. it is what is going to stop the scroll and make people like pay attention. How do you like, is there any tips that you can share on like how you come up with like scroll stopping headlines or hooks as you would call them? 
Um, so I look for those hooks when I am reading other people's content. Okay. Not that I like copy and paste their hook, right. but I will keep like a Google, again, a Google doc. If I see someone's subject line or their, um, the first part of their social caption that really makes me stop and go, huh, I wonder what that is. Uh, then I will put, keep like a running list of those things to kind of give me ideas for, the structure of how they're doing things, or if there's like a word that they use that really catches my eye. Um, so that's, I keep that just as like a source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I think you also have to, sometimes I, well, not sometimes, most of the time I write the hook last because it's Got the it. hardest part to write. So I get the whole story out and then I can look at it and go, okay, what is the most interesting part of this? Or what is the part that's going to make people like question what this is about or why I'm sharing this. And then I develop the hook or the, the headline from there. Cause I really think, and that's, I do that with sales pages and with emails and all the things. I go back and do that very last because I do think it's the hardest part of whatever you're writing. It is. It's the hardest and it's the most important. Right. Right. right? <laughs> and that can be another good way to utilize AI is if you come up with like something and you're like, oh, this just isn't quite catchy enough. Mm -hmm. That's when I will go to chat GPT or one of those AI bots and say like, can you help me come up with 10 alternative headlines for this? Right. And I'll put in what I already have. And I almost never use exactly one of the other things that it spits out for me, but I can pick apart like pieces of, Ooh, I like how that worked with this or things right. like that just to kind of get more ideas flowing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this has been great. Uh, I is if there's anything else that you feel like we need to talk about, like regarding stories. Um, I feel like we've hit hit a lot of it. This has been really fun. I have enjoyed chatting with you, and stories have always been such an integral part of who I am and how I learn about the world. And so I'm so excited to be able to help more business owners use this to connect with their people and draw them in and. Um, yeah, I really think it can be a game changer for how you connect with people and having people remember you because we have to be exposed to people over and over again or to ideas over and over again a lot of times before it really sinks in. And I think that stories are a great way to do that. I also think that stories are that perfect way like as, as an online business owner, you can feel like I'm just saying the same thing that everybody else is saying. Like, what tip do I have to share that's different from another coach or another OBM or another whatever it is? Right. And your story can help people understand the same idea in a different way. Like the way that you say it may be what makes it finally click for them. Yes. Because they may have heard the same idea from 10 different people in 10 different ways but your way of saying it and sharing it may be what actually breaks through for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. One of the things I was thinking about too is I'm sure that there are people who are listening that have that little voice in their head that says, Oh, I'm just not a good storyteller or I'm just, this is not something that comes naturally for me. You know, how do I get better at telling stories? And one of the things that I thought about was, I think the more that you can, one, focus on like learning to be a good storyteller by looking at what other people are doing, mm -hmm. read books, pay attention to way, the way they're telling stories, watch shows, pay attention to the way they, you know, they are conveying something, listen to podcasts, uh, read other people's emails, like you said, and pay mm -hmm. attention to the way stories are being conveyed in, in those, you know, in those ways, because I think mm -hmm. that that can just be really helpful for us. Just like we study anything, how do we become a better copywriter? How do we become a better digital marketer? How do we become a better coach? You know, like all these different skills, you know, storytelling is a skill. 
mm -hmm. as well. And so we have to study the way people tell stories Absolutely. And, and how they engage us. Yeah. And that's one of the things, any book, like if you read books on how to become a better writer, mm -hmm. one of the biggest tips is always read more. Like the more that you are reading and consuming and listening to, you're going to pick up things if you're paying attention to it. And you can also tell stories about the stories that you have heard, like maybe something that you saw in an episode of something you watched on Netflix or maybe a podcast that you listened to, there may have been something that really hit home with you that you feel like can relate to what you are saying to your audience. And so you can tell stories of, you know, you just being out for a walk, listening to a podcast and you had this like aha moment. Um, and that can be a powerful story for your clients as well. Yes. So I encourage everyone who is listening to next time you are producing social media content or you're writing an email or anything along those lines, practice telling a story mm -hmm. and just see <clears throat> what happens. I really think it can, I, I really do think it can make a difference. I know I sometimes even forget, like I am very much about you know, inspiring people with wisdom and, and facts and, you know, tips on how to do this. I'm a very how-to kind of person. And I have to stop my own self and say, okay, I got to tell stories. Like I got to infuse like stories about my clients and how, and how they use this or stories about myself or, or whatever. So it is, it mm -hmm. is an art. It is something that you have to practice. And so I just encourage you to try to use this and see if it doesn't make a difference in connecting with other people. So speaking of stories, there's stories in podcasts, TV shows, books. Tell me what is your favorite podcast book or TV show that right now that you are completely binging? So I feel like the podcasts that are Oh, I'm always binging and listening to um, We Can Do Hard Things with Glennon Doyle, which I know so many people love and listen to her podcast and love her books. I also love Jen Hatmaker's uh, podcast. It's not a business podcast. It's about her being a mom and a woman and just a human in the world. And I think I love her podcast so much because she is such a wonderful storyteller. Mm -hmm. Like she told a story on, I believe it was on her social media the other day about her teenage daughter taking all of the um, LaCroix and bubbly water and things from her fridge. Like just all of a sudden, all of those things had disappeared. She went to go get a drink and her daughter had taken all of them to the park to resell to people who were there. And <laughs> thought, it was like this is a brilliant business model for my teenager because she has no investment costs. She just took everything <laughs> from the fridge and resold it to other people. And it just made me laugh that's so hilarious. much. So she's so good at just, and again, that's not like a huge epic story. She just went to the refrigerator and everything was gone. Right. And she found out later and it was really funny. So, you know, just little moments like that. But I love her podcast. Um, I feel like I'm always listening to, I always have something in my ear or something that I'm reading or consuming. Um, as far as TV, I'm rewatching Shit's Creek again. Oh my right God, now. I love Shit's Creek. Like, oh my, I was so sad when that ended. Like, Me so too. sad. I love Shit's Creek. It was yeah. it, so good. Yeah. yeah, so I've seen it multiple times before, but it's like my comfort food show. <laughs> like, it's just what I watch when I need something to watch. Comic so. relief, right? Yeah. It, yeah, it's so great. It, it's so great. So anyway, Jennifer, thank you so much. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, you're at jenniferdewittcopy.com. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And that's my handle on Instagram as well. That's the other place to reach out and connect. And yeah. Awesome. And please, please, please grab her, uh, her storytelling prompts guide. It is really, really good. I downloaded it myself and it's really helpful for just spurring creative ideas about how you can share uh, your stories. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here uh, today, uh, Jennifer, and we'll be talking, I'm sure, online. 
Yeah, thank you so much. That's a wrap on today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Boosting Business Breakthroughs podcast. Want to hear more business breakthrough ideas? I'll be back next week with a new episode to help you grow your coaching business. If you enjoyed listening, make sure you subscribe, leave us a rating, and tell all your coach friends where to find us. Head over to boostingbusinessbreakthroughs.com to learn more. Thanks for listening. And remember, your next business breakthrough is waiting for you.